type thing. So anyways, welcome everybody. It is Friday, July 10th, 10 o'clock California time. And it's gonna be a real blistering weekend, but the good, and it's overcast right now, so that's that helps a little. And then it's gonna be like low 90s next week when we're taping here. So um, let me talk a little bit about that just real quick. No, I'm gonna talk about it in the end. All right, so on Wednesday, I had a lot of information to share with you. And I think if I were you, I would grab a pencil because or a pen to write something down that I'm going to share in a few minutes. It's about the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. I think you might want to participate. And yes, you can participate. So hang on for that. I want to show you a couple Sequoia quilts. And here's the problem, you guys, is I know I have lost some of your quilts. I know it. So I apologize. If you send your quilt to me, and it didn't get up, it's lost. And I know one in particular, and I'll talk about that when I see a sister quilt of its this morning, all right? So let's take a look at Kathy's. Oh, I always, <laughs> how many times do I have to do this? Oh yeah, this one reminds me of the one that I lost. So um, I just think this is so cute. I have to guess that those flowers in the middle are, um, cut out from some fabric that you have, great job. And then the two birds, and I, maybe I did show this one, I don't know. Um, anyways, just so you know that the two birds are is the icon uh, that my dad is with me. Whenever I just see two birds, I know he's signaling me a little message, like you're doing well, kid. You're doing it, kid, just keep doing it. So this one especially put a smile on my face. Um, and the one that this, when I realized I didn't show you one, it was one where a gal put her um, her working dogs in it. Her, uh, I don't know if they're guide dogs. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I thought, oh, that's fabulous. So good place to put your pets and stuff like that, right? So then this is Marcy's and um, I love blue and white quilts, absolutely love them. And I wanna note that both of those gals, it's bound. So they are done, man. They're ready to go on to the next thing. So uh, Marcy, I love blue and white quilts. You cannot go wrong with them. And I'm amazed at how beautifully the little red pops of flowers work right in. And it's because you guys, if you go to the upper left-hand corner, and then slide down to the bottom right hand corner, you can see that your eye is traveling across the whole, whole thing. So thank you, you guys. And again, if I've missed your quilt, just please resend it, all right? So I would like to talk about one of you suggested something and I went to Barbara Black Barbara Shepherd's our block of the month um, every year. When Sue Garman passed, she took over for that quilt, and then we did another quilt. I think it was Becky Goldsmith's, and then right now we're doing uh, a quilt of actually the Sue Garman's that her family let us like rent for a year or whatever. Well, she's just kind of all over the forum, like a lot, <laughs> like. I'm not <laughs> so, and it's not because I don't care what's going on there. It's just how much can I put into, you know? So somebody came up with a great idea and it was, um, let's do a CAFE mystery quilt subject area in the forum. And I went, brilliant. And I don't know how to set it up. That's how Neanderthal I am with the forum. So what you're gonna do, and Barbara has set it up, and you can share your pictures in there and all that. I mean, it's just great. So, and communicate with each other. So let's go to the front page of the website, all right? So I can show you how to get there. And I just want to emphasize here that the current show is the Quilting Masterclass Applique One. And you can see who's in that class. I think this Sunday it goes into Applique Two. I'm not, exactly sure, but I'm pretty sure that's true. Okay, so let's look at this here. And up here there is Connect, all right? Connect will take you down into, and I'm pretty sure you can see my cursor, will take you, when you hit Connect, underneath this there's Forum, okay? Go to the Forum, and then you can see right down second one 
it is a uh, cave mystery class. So uh, thank you, Barbara, so much for doing that because this really does give a place where we can share and stuff. And then you're not dependent on my um, e unreliableness, <laughs> which I'm just proving. So, oh, one thing I want to show you. Club lights on, just so you know. It's now it's now become like everything's okay if I turn my club lights on. <laughs> so this weekend is the Sisters Outdoor Quilt Show. Well, not as we know it and not as we have enjoyed in the past, but they have really pulled it together and they've got events that are going on on Saturday. Now, the other thing they're doing is, is they're asking you to hang a quilt outside, just like we've done in the past, take a picture of it and upload it into the gallery so that we can have an outdoor quilt show virtually all over the world. I think this is absolutely genius. But here's why I wanted you to get your pencil, okay? It is, I kept going to the Stitch and Post and I couldn't find it. You know, it's the Stitch and Post in Sisters, Oregon. No, that's not where you're going to find it. You're going to find it at soqs.org, sistersoutdoorquiltshow.org, soqs.org, dot org. If you go to dot com, you're going to go to a nasty site. Ask me how I know. So dot org. If you want to go to a nasty site, well, there it is. It will <laughs> it'll take you to here. And you can see, I love it, they called 2020 Reimagined, and then the Virtual Quilt Show. <clears throat> so it will be um, a great, I am very excited about this. In fact, today I'm going to figure out which quilt I'm going to hang. So kudos to Valerie Wells, to Jean Wells, to Anne, to everybody who uh, does this, because you guys, I can't even tell you how upset Jean was. I think this would have been the 45th, I'm not 100% sure. But I mean, it's up there. I mean, she is just beside herself. And the way they've pulled up their bootstraps, right on people, right on. Somebody else emailed me. I'm just going through laundry here. If you are getting the kit Brassica, all right, it's absolutely beautiful. It's coming with these artisan hand dyes. And some have like like white spots on them and some are just perfect and some have little other colors dipping in. And as I told you, if something was a little off, Suzanne and I'd go, yeah, no. And so we tried to call them properly, but they are hand dyes. And the gal that wrote me said, yes, they did run. So she said, especially, I don't have a packet here, especially the things with red base, purple base and stuff like that. So again, your assignment this weekend is to please wash and press. And if you want to throw a little starch on it, yay. It, the fabric does have a little bit of a different hand to it. And even the edge is just, it's not like how we know uh, salvage is to be. There's like little, which I'm thinking, ooh, I could cut that off and I could put that in my art book and do some cool things with that. So uh, let's see, before we get into this today, and I really am excited about today's because we're going to talk about inspiration from antique quilts. Um, this is what I've decided that's going to happen. This is how we're going to roll people. We're still waiting for white to come in. And then we've got a bunch of brassica we can ship out. We're dealing with some other people off the record. And I just have to say that because of the whole wish list debacle. And I'm, we're not quite sure when we can get that out. But I'm thinking that a week from Monday, and uh, a good presenter would have given you the date, a week from Monday we're going to start. And if you don't have your fabric, it's no big deal. It's just no big deal because all of this is recorded and you can just go back and you can watch. And then really the instruction only is about 15 minutes. So you can, well, hopefully, <laughs> so you can just go back and, and watch. All right. So now how the rest of the week is going to roll out is this. Okay. Today's Friday. I mentioned on Wednesday, I see my Gilman here. Week from Monday. July 20th, a week, that's my Gilman. I need an earpiece, man. July 20th is a week from Monday. Oh, if you have any questions along the way as we go through our class today, just type them down there and then John's bringing them in to me. So what's gonna happen next week? Next week is a really big week, all right? I'm gonna wrap up the scrap quilt today 
Um, and then on Monday, as I mentioned, is Freddie Moran's 90th birthday. And so her big deal is red as a neutral, and I will present that. And then I'm going to delight you with some of her quilts that I can grab off the internet. Because to me, she is the ultimate in scrap quilts. I mean, the ultimate. She has zero fear of color. And her work is whimsical, it's wonderful, it's charming, and it gives you permission to just go off the deep end. That's what Freddie does. So then Tuesday, I will be at her house and Diana's house, and we're going to get two field pieces for TQS. And then Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be taping in my backyard and in my house. And then Friday, I, I'm just pretty darn sure I'm going to be just wasted. But John has promised to do some Facebook Lives while we're taping on Tuesday, Thursday. We can't tell you when. Again, they are recorded, so you can just go back and watch them, but he has made that commitment. So I'm not totally leaving you high and dry, but I just know, I know when I've hit, when I've hit the limit, and I think after three days of taping at my house, or at, on a field piece thing, and then my house, I'm, I'm going to be done, but we're going to bring you sneaky peekies and stuff like that. So, and I'm very excited about who's going to be coming here. Okay, so I think I have everything here. And let's get over to the uh, my lecture, uh, continuing on with our scrap quilts. And again, remember this is all <clears throat> pre-recorded, so to speak, and it's all there. So I want to get rid of this so I can see, and I want to scoot this over. All right, all right. So we ended <clears throat> on Jan McGee's quilt yesterday, and we spoke about those dots right there and how Rosalie Dace told about that, that survey of where the most effective place to put something that stands out is. So let's go in and take a look at an antique quilt that's owned by Diana McClun, going there Tuesday. It's a wool quilt. It's a solid quilt. It's a scrap quilt. It's all of those things, you guys. And so don't just lead out, don't leave out scraps as a possibility. I love that there's also the embroidery around the edge and all that because all that good stuff is going to show, okay? So we also have fabulous hand dyes available today. Can we start with Ricky Tim's, all right? You know, once, um, once in a blue moon, Ricky will do sell scrap bags of his fabric and they might have like you know 300 bags and they'll be gone like in 30 seconds so if you want to play with one of his scrap bags i would make darn sure that you are on his personal email list okay because sometimes by the time our newsletter goes out it's too late so you need to get on his um, email list all righty roo so this is cherry wood and one thing I want to point out, it's very subtle, but on the border, it's not just one black. It's a bunch of different blacks. And I think it's much more interesting than if it were just one black. And what happened was, was before I made this quilt, and it's in the scrapbook too, before I made this quilt, I uh, actually got hold of them and I said, do you have any new colors coming up that you can just send me scraps? And they did. So that, I think, really contributed to the effect of all the different colors in there. And I have gotten a couple orders of the scrapbook. Uh, I sent a bunch out yesterday and I've got a couple more today. So thank you. I want to clean out my garage. Thank you. Okay, this is by Annabeth Dollins. And it's a really, really large quilt. And I can't remember where I saw it. I think I might have... Maybe it was PIQF, maybe. But I loved this because number one, it reminded me of what you see when you go to, when you crochet, like a crochet, you know, granny square blanket. But all, all the colors in there. And, and yet it's the brown and the blue and the beige that's grounding the whole thing together. But then let's take a look at the center row. From the left-hand side, let's go over three. Where the heck did that red come from? And then go over two more, the green. And then the bottom row, one in from the right. What? I love that because it adds an unpredictability of the whole thing. I love this quilt. And it was with her permission that I can share this with you. 
So back in the day at thequiltshow.com, well, Edita Sitar has been on, and she's been on, I think, maybe three times. But I believe it was the first time she was on. She uh, did something with triangles, and people said, oh, we want to do a triangle exchange. Our, our community did at thequiltshow.com. And so Lilo goes, um, oh, I'm not, I, she could see the writing on the wall with this one. She goes, I'm not running this. So a group of loyalists like Claire down in Texas said, I'll do it. I'll do it. And so when we got to a quarter of a million triangles that were being exchanged worldwide, um, she put up the, the white flag. She said, that's it. Okay. And so people started working with these triangles. I mean, I think there were about 600, 650 participants, and then there was a batik one where there might have been 400 participants. I forget. But anyways, Kim McClowski made this, and I think this is one of the most stunning scrap quilts I have ever seen. And so what is pulling it together? Okay, number one, she's got that X that is darker value than at 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, 9 o'clock. And again, value is doing a lot of the work. So I just adore this. Kim, congratulations. There were a bunch of quilts that came out from this. And honestly, I'm not quite sure where all the imagery went, which is sad because it was really quite illuminating. Um, remember, you guys, right now with the COVID special, it's $19.95 for six months. And all you would have to do is go and watch a show, go under search, and type in Edita's name, type in Scrap Quilts, and then it will, I type in Edita, E-D-Y-T-A. Um, I would type in her name, type, enter her name, <laughs> and then you will come up with the show and you can see where all this madness started. <laughs> and then Ricky and I like autographed um, a ton, like 650 blocks or something like that. Okay, so here is an antique quilt uh, owned by Diana McClun again. I, I'm going to make this quilt at some point. I just, I haven't committed to it yet. It probably will be when I go away with my girlfriends for a week because this could just really get on my nerves. But I love this quilt. Again, like um, like uh, the one before, Anna, Annabeth horizontally you'll see strips of color like starting at the top the pink and then you've got the red and then you've got the blue and then you've got the black and then you've got the pink and so and so that gives it some structure so it's not a complete mishmash i love this quilt so this is my all-time favorite scrap quilt on the face of the earth. I know on other lectures I've spoken about it here in other classes, and it's Julie, Julie Silber's Universe Quilt. In fact, she will be here doing a segment with uh, Joe Cunningham. This quilt I love. And I look at it, and I'm, I'm assuming a woman made it. It's from the 1800s. In fact, we're actually going to talk a little bit about this quilt when we tape. And it's about taking antique quilts taking their cues and doing something nor with it that's modern and the thing is i i just love this and then finally i called and asked permission if i could copy it and julie said sure well i shouldn't say copy it but use it as inspiration and as i got into the center of it it is a wacky wacky quilt I don't even know how the woman got it together. And again, I'm assuming it's a woman, so forgive me if it's not. I kind of feel like perhaps she was going through something emotional <laughs> in her life at that point. But using that as the cue, here's my scrap quilt. I honored the center and then the stars and the nine patches. But I don't know if I told you this, guys, before. When I went to make this quilt, I decided my two bays of fabric weren't good, right? So I went to the um, quilt shop and I spent $500 on new scraps. Oh my gosh. I instantly became a preferred customer. Just want to say that. <laughs> Here is another quilt by Julie Silber. You know, you could Google her and go to her site and there's a lot of really great quilts for inspiration as well as fabulous antique quilts for sale. So this one really really struck me and I'd like to share with you the quilt that I made from it.
completely different. Let me bounce back so you can gather your thoughts <laughs> and then go here. John, do you have a question? They're owned by Julie oh, 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 they're owned by Julie Silver. <laughs> they're not made by Julie Silver. That's funny. She is a quilt collector extraordinaire. I lost my spot. Okay, there it is. Oh, that is so funny, John. Okay. So this morning I got up and John had been um, playing around on the TQS website looking for antique quilts. And this, this Delectable Mountains came up. And I love it. Now I look at this and I'm thinking, well, wouldn't you be an interesting scrap quilt in today's fabrics? But I want to point a couple things out. First of all, those stripes are really, really bold. And honestly, I think it adds so much to it in unpredictability, especially the, the darker ones. And then look how the person scattered the red in. If it were mine now, if I were to remake it, I feel like the red is heavy on the bottom right-hand side on a diagonal. I'd probably get one up there in the left upper corner somewhere. Not necessarily corner, but somewhere there to have my eyes travel all over. But this is definitely a candidate of a quilt I would love to make. Okay, this one is called Live Oak. At first I went, oh, I would love to make this. And then I looked at it and I said, no, not really. <laughs> I kind of want to do all those diamonds. But how unpredictable this quilt is with that yellow. And then the little pink right above it, that background. This is fabulous. <clears throat> Again, this is uh, being recorded, so if you want to go back and look at these, yay. Okay, this is Pine Burr. I, I have not made this quilt, nor the one above, but I think the yellow is so delicious, I can't stand it. And I would have guessed that it might be too strong, you know, but the fact that it's got the white for the pine burrs that bounce against that yellow is great. And then that inner border of white helps just hold the whole thing together. Postage stamp. Okay, she kinda, I'm sorry, I shouldn't say she. And I don't know who owns these ones I'm showing you that John found on our site, I do not know. So I think what's interesting here, you got a couple things going on. First of all, you've got that um, pineapple in the middle. And if I were to do that pineapple, I'm gonna tell you right now, I'd be doing it foundation paper piecing. Uh, one time I tried to do a pineapple quilt without foundation paper piecing and the outside ended up being all stretched because there are biases that end up on the outside. So I would definitely foundation paper piece the middle. But then it's very subtle, but it's there. You can see how basically the border is lighter than the body of the quilt. And it's especially evident on the right hand side going vertical, right in here, right there. I don't think I wanna make this quilt. <laughs> so I'll leave it up to one of you. <laughs> well, let me show you the quilt I wanna make. I almost had a heart attack when I saw this and John found it. I want to make that. I love that. I love everything about this. And as it says in my notes, it's pre-Civil War. I love this. I love it, love it, love it, love it. And chances are I could find all those patterns in the quick and easy block tool. And if I couldn't in the size I wanted, then I would pick something else. So if I were going to make this, I would commit to work on a six inch grid. So I would like start with a six inch nine patch, and then I would do uh, four inches. And then if I were say to do the basket, which is on the right, I would do like eight inches or 10 inches. I would do something where it can all march together. And interestingly enough, as I look at this, the quilt maker put it together. Well, maybe not, my pants are on fire. It looks like here it was done in vertical rows. Okay, you gotta look at that. But then I look up here and that gets screwed up. So, may, so maybe you'd have to find your neighborhood up here, maybe this, and then you got your vertical rows. So it is, it is a little bit like, um, like a jigsaw. I mean, it's a jigsaw puzzle. Like I said, the late Mary Ellen Hopkins would say, put it in neighborhoods. Okay, 
so <clears throat> I've made this quilt twice once out of silk and it came out horrible I mean it did not come out square because and I couldn't square it up because the outside edge has those uh, quarter square triangles as the border and if I were to square it up it would it would cut off tips and working with the silk the silk dupiani there's very little stretch and pull in it I think I've shared that with you before there was no way it was gonna block out so I was really unhappy because man it looks so good in silk but it's just completely wonky so I decided to make it again and again it's my interpretation of it I look at components in here and I think who what do I want to make what do I want to do what what is it that's calling to me so because this is cray cray as far as no let me start over I'm gonna say I didn't want to do this so it looked like it was done in 1875 I do have a delicious collection of those repros but I did it's been done I didn't want to do it in that so at the local quilt shop I found this fabric and I thought it was just absolutely beautiful and I, I always like when I'm doing a quilt to purchase new fabric just because it's part of the kill, you know, <laughs> I love it. And so the, here's the quilt I made. And that's my rendition of that quilt. Now what I did when I made it was I, oh, I can see there's even some one inch things up there at the very top, upper right. So, so what I did was I just made pieces block at a time block at a time block at a time okay and then I sewed the whole thing together and what happened was okay so you've got a huge orange presence going diagonally across the center and then you have a strong orange presence up here but down in here it wasn't happening at all I think that one might have been there I forget it needed more orange down there now was I gonna take this quilt apart and redo it not on your life so what I did is trade secret I applique on top I used oh look at that great stitching across that one orange one <laughs> oh well I used um, the Rosa Roja method of which we have a show on that uh, it's the Apple quick method and it's where you wrap you cut the shape the size of the shape you want to make and then you finish it by using a glue stick and then you've got a finished edge applique and you actually I machine applique it down I did not do that by hand and I did that by using my blanket stitch get out your pencil by lengthening the length of the blanket stitch to about a 3.2 3.3 and then making it as skinny as a 0.08 and I probably used uh, orange thread I probably used my 80 weight honestly I don't remember and then I or I could have used my monopoly that's a hundred weight that is like the clear use like a smoke or a clear and you can see down here in the bottom right it, it is not perfect but seriously can you find it no so here's the thing you guys when you make a quilt and this is going to be true with our cave mystery quilt is that you don't know where it's going and it and it ends up it ends up often having a mind of its own which is again why you need a design wall I will never stop pounding that drum nor will Ricky um, and I want you to think of your quilt as this this episode happened one night in Door County Wisconsin in Raleigh's Bay to say that we had all had a couple drinks might be the understatement but all of a sudden I realized I was in a boat with a bunch of pirates and now I had the choice of letting that boat sink and or and or picking up the picking up the oars and getting with the program so I picked up the oars okay and I started rowing I was in charge of that boat those pirates were not and I think that that's really important to know when you go through making a quilt 
that is scrappy. It's 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 gonna go awry. I can guarantee you, it's gonna go awry, and that's why I'm so kind of nervous. I'm looking at my design wall by doing the cave mystery quilt. And what that means, you guys, is that I have not pre-made this quilt. It's a mystery to me how it's going to work out, okay? And, oh, the other thing is, I don't know if I already said this, some of you got the Brassica, and but you also purchased the first round. There is no reason this can't all play together if you want to combine it. I, I might, I don't know. I haven't decided if that's cheating or not. So... Okay, I got some questions from John. Oh, and where do you go to take this class? Right here at 10 o'clock, Monday, Wednesday, Friday um, at 10 o'clock Pacific time. And we're just gonna go through block by block by block using the quick and easy block tool. By the way, I use this for most of my wacky antique quilts. I used what was in here. So approximately, what's the size of the mystery quilt? Well, excuse me. In the end, I don't know why I always have to do that when I'm on live. I mean, how embarrassing. Uh, you can make it whatever you want. I, I really don't want you copying me. I mean, you can. I don't care. But mine <clears throat> will, will probably end up the size of a lap quilt just because that's what I do and that's what I whack out. But there is no reason you can't get in this book because we're going to go through blocks in this book and just go to town making other things, all right? And then other blocks and putting them in. And then the great thing is that we can post them in the forum. I just love that you guys came up with that idea. So it's a mystery. I probably shouldn't have called it a mystery quilt. Um, I think of the Fleetwood set of, of the Fleetwood Mac song, Mystery to Me. Yep, that's what I'm gonna call it. It's the Mystery to Me quilt. <laughs> Total yardage for the cave quilt. See, that's the thing again, we just secured these uh, half yard bundles and there were six in a bundle. And then we secured these little stacks of, well, we secured them, we're cutting them, little stacks of solids have way more than enough, way more than enough. And then as far as white go, um, if you're gonna do a larger quilt, get a couple, gets a couple yards of white, you probably have it. It could be scrappy white, it doesn't matter. Um, so I know I feel like when people ask me, I'm being super evasive because I think a lot of people go and they look at a pattern and they want to be told what to do. I, I can't. This is how I work, okay? So you're going on a, a journey with me. And if it's if it's distasteful privately, <laughs> email me and I'll try and calm you down, okay? <laughs> oh, what should the undergrid fabric what should be the undergrid fabric on the design wall? Well, you don't have to have anything on your design wall, okay? I mean, you can you can just do like a, a lot of people have fleece, a lot of people have flannel. You just need something you can poke into. And so, uh, I mean, you could, if you don't have room, go get yourself a, I don't know where you're gonna go get this, a couple pieces of foam core board that's quarter inch thick and then put something on top of that. I just like that mine has it. And again, I got it from Eddie's Quilting Bee in Sunnyvale, California. Somebody said last week it's on his front page. Is Oh, okay. Is Ricky not involved in my show anymore? This actually is not the show. <laughs> and yes, Ricky is profoundly involved. He's just in La Vida and I'm doing this. No, he's not, actually, he's not in La Vida. He's, in, um, he's up in the mountains, like at about 800, 8,000, not 800. 8,000 feet high or something and his internet stinks and so um, I'm doing this I'm doing this and so I will be taping okay here's the other thing guys I'm gonna be taping four shows here he will not be in the shows because he is I don't we're trying to keep it small okay then he is gonna probably do four shows if not six if not eight without me all right, so it, nobody's mad, nobody's upset. We're just respecting what's going on in these unprecedented times, and it's and we've had a lot of discussions behind the scene scenes, and it's it's hard, you guys. I mean, it's it's because we work so well together. Okay, so it's just a matter of the coronavirus is why we're doing this, you know. So let's see. Oh, my foam core board. Yeah, that would be eight thousand feet elevation Marion and he would have to go back to town every single day and that's an hour drive over roads that are a mess I mean it just 
Ah, yeah. So he's 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 all focused on Lizzie Albright and who, all that good stuff will be coming out soon. Okay. So, um, John, are there any more things here? <clears throat> okay. So, number one on Monday is Freddie Moran's ninetieth birthday, and I'm gonna do her gig on Red as a Neutral and show some of the quilts. Tuesday, I'm gonna be out of pocket doing field pieces. Wednesday, Thursday, we'll be taping here with. I mean, I don't want him coming here, meaning that why should he risk himself unnecessarily, right? Wouldn't you guys all agree? So um, that, you know, it, it it's hard, okay? I was a little discombobulated on Wednesday, and it's because I was talking to the producer, and we were trying to figure out a way to just pull it all together, and we're still working on that, but um, it won't be the same. It'll be covid Oh, also, I want you to know, um, we tested negative. We did. And also, other than show and tell, chances are I'm going to have a mask on. All right? So I hope that doesn't throw you off. I just want the safety of our guests. All right? So you guys take care. We'll see you Monday. Happy pre-birthday, Freddie Moran. The Quilting World loves you. And you guys have a great weekend. I plan to sew on my mystery quilt. <laughs> Talk to you later.